So the 29th country, Cambodia. Well, in Laos, Vientiane, the capital, I was helped out by a Chinese businessman called Mr. Liao, and he sponsored some of my trips because, uh, you know, he told me safety is the priority. Without safety, you know, there's nothing. So I accepted his help, and he gave me some US dollar, and he bought me a bus ticket um, from Vientiane to Paxé which is a, a town um, between the Cambodia border. And then he also bought me some food, took me to try the local food with his staff and then see me off in the bus station. So after an overnight bus, I arrived at Paxe. Uh, I still needed to hitchhike to the border. Um, okay, and then there's a, a one local guy who barely speak English picked me up. And then he told me he got a friend who can speak uh, uh, English, even his friend is a local, so he just took me to his friend's place. It's a snack place, and then, and then, and luckily, there's uh, uh, another uh, Naoshan Chinese in that uh, uh, place, and she noticed that I'm going to the border, and she was on the way to the Laos be a factory which is on the same direction so she proactively offered me a lift and also um, notice I'm here checking alone and uh, in in Laos and then she just want to help me and then she gave me some um, just uh, some local money to allow me to take the public transportation and also um, she offered me like the baked banana to try and even when she's seeing off uh, and she, she still feel, you know, worried about me, but yeah, so, um, and then she, she bring me to a shop to ask the lady to help me to find a vehicle. So I just thanked her, I hugged her, and then, uh, you know, still even I, I got some local currency she gave to me, but still I want to save it to, um, um, for the necessary, so I still plan to hitchhike. And then it's a it's just countryside road, and then eventually I he tried a, a, a car, and the driver doesn't speak any English, but he, he got a friend, so um, he just caught his friend and then to let his friend to talk to me. So I thought that they get to understand the way I'm traveling, but you know, eventually they didn't get it. So the driver tried to stop a a a, a bus for me, but I, I you know. Due to the language barrier, I don't know which direction the bus is going, so I didn't get on the bus. So I just thanked the driver and I continued to hitchhike. And then it's getting raining, you know, in Southeast Asia in the summer, raining season. So I was thinking, should I stop her and wait in some place? But I think, okay, maybe I have a higher uh, possibility to get uh, a lift uh, under hitchhiking in the rain. So I continue hitchhike and luckily uh, there's a driver uh, who is a uh, original from my hometown, Chang Changcheng. And then she was driving two Chinese, a couple, like to sightseeing in, in that area. So I was happy to find out then they offered me a lift. But after that, uh, before the border, they need to turn to another direction. So I just thank them and continue and uh, while rain again i was still you know uh waiting on the road and then they, they show up again because they were on the wrong direction so this they continually offered me a, a few uh, uh distance more and eventually they they needed to turn another direction so i just thanked them again and then i was walking you know sometimes there there's a some cows and with wheels passed and sometimes there's some some motto passed uh, you know and eventually a local uh, Shan, uh, who were driving the scooter and offered me a lift and he told me oh his family is living by here and then he even took me to say hello when we uh, passed by their place and then he changed another scooter to send me to the border yeah which i really appreciate so after I arrived at the border, there's a tour guide find out me and then he was asking me, um, um, am I by m myself? 
and he feels so weird because uh, uh, normally Chinese people travel with a, a group, you know, I was there in the border, you know, in the middle of nowhere by myself with my luggage and then he tried to offer me some help for my uh, arrival car. I said no thank you because I was uh, being guard for, for that. So, and then after that, uh, uh, he get noticed uh, the way I'm traveling and he thought I just want to save money. So, and then he talked to the uh, border officer for a little bit and then and the border officer helped me to find a truck to offer me to the nearby town, Centrum. And then I came to the truck and the tour guide followed me. And then and, and he said, oh, maybe we can share accommodation together in Centrum. So, you know, when I arrived, Centrum is getting dark and late. So I just followed the plans. I didn't think like twice. And the first night, so when we arrived, we grabbed some food and then uh, there are like two beds in the room. So I just uh, decided to go to bed. And then he told me he's going to uh, outside for dancing. So I, I, ju I just told him, okay, enjoy. And so he went out. And after that, he came back, so nothing happened. And the next morning, when I tried to pay my uh, accommodation fee, and then I was being told that it's already paid. And then the reception told me the tour guide is going to pick me up later. So yeah, after that, the tour guide came and he asked me to come to the border where I was yesterday to pick up some other uh, tourist and to see if he can arrange me a, a lift uh, to bring me to Simrad. Yeah, because I needed to hitchhike, so I just uh, I just went to the border with him. And then, but uh, on that day, I couldn't find any vehicle because after we picked up all, a, a bunch of tourists, and then when, when we arrived at the Centrum, you know, uh, different of them, it's going to different direction. Everyone get a bus, not me. Yeah, so that day uh, the tour guide took me to another guest house and uh, so I just uh, stayed in the guest house and he didn't stay in the guest house that night. He went to his friend's place. Um, the next morning he came and bring me food and told me uh, don't worry about my food or accommodation, he will help me out. He just wants to see me and I feel so weird. Um, <clears throat> So the the third night, uh, I was sleeping, and then he just locked the door. And he was locking, so I opened the door, and then he was like very drunk. I could smell that, and then he told me, oh, "Okay, he needed to stay in the guest house tonight." Okay, I mean, he paid for the guest house, and there are two beds, so I just let in let him in, and then. Uh, after I tried to sleep, he just suddenly appeared in front of my bed and asked me if a kiss. I said no, no. And then after that, he tried again. He he, he was uh, trying to uh, say that to me. I said I will leave the guest house now. And then eventually he left. And and then that night I couldn't sleep well. So the next day I left. I think I needed to he checked by myself to see rape. But on the way, I just get lost. So one Cambodian uh, soldier just found me and took me to a Chinese restaurant because he doesn't speak any English. There's one um, Chinese man helped me uh, to translate. And then um, the Cambodian soldier wouldn't allow me to hitchhike to Sinre. He told me he will buy me a bus ticket. But uh, that day was too late, so tomorrow morning he will come to the Chinese restaurant and pick me up. And then the Chinese people in the Chinese restaurant they were very kind. They accommodated me that night and they even cooked me fish, you know, the ne next day. And the chef of the Chinese restaurant um, packed me a lunchbox, but he, he reminded me, uh, don't open the lunchbox until afternoon. So I just followed. And the Cambodian soldier came to pick me up. We take the ferry across the river and uh, put me on the vehicle. It, it's just like uh, your your relative seeing you of, off, you know, I, I feel like. So I truly appreciate for all the beautiful people I met in San Fran. And then while I was on the vehicle, I was thinking, okay, about my lunch, I should open it and uh, eat because it's getting very hot. And then after I opened my lunchbox, under the lunchbox, there